Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. God bless you. It has been quite some time since I have gotten uh, gone live on my channel. So I'm so happy to have you guys here. I see that we've got five people in the house already, and that number will be rising shortly. So as you guys jump on in, uh, get prepared. I need you to get your notes, your, re your, your pens, your pencils, a uh, fresh sheet of paper. We're going to be discussing money and relationships in the kingdom. So we're going to be very focused, very kingdom-driven conversation. But also, we're going to be bringing you logical, very practical you know, ideas and concepts that we can uh, implement in our day-to-day -day lives as it pertains to really the main category. You've got faith, family, friends, your business relationships, and personal uh, partner, spouse, date, this someone you're dating, um, in, in those realms that we want to uh, really discuss. And we're going to have that conversation with my friend, Dr. Eddie Connor, whom I connected with um, a little over a year and a half now. Um, so we're still fairly new relationship growing, but I, I've learned so much from this gentleman. I consider him uh, an expert in the area of relationship building, um, really uh, as an author, as a speaker, coach, that has really, I've seen almost at the I, I want to say that, you know, Dr. Eddie Connor is already at uh, a peak based on like just what I've been involved in. I know when I first hit his Instagram, it was already like 50 plus thousand subscribers and all over the place. A lot of speaking engagements. Um, I seen the accolades. I'm like, all right, this guy's already peaking out. But as I got to really spend time with him one on one, this guy's only just getting started. Uh, and so we're going to hear his background. We're going to hear uh, some topics that we want to cover. And then we're just going to have a very, very calm, uh, open, transparent uh, discussion, conversation. And I want you guys to, you know, drop your questions, your, your concerns, your thoughts uh, that arise from this conversation. So without any further ado, hello, Dr. Eddie Connor. How are you? How's everything going? If you could please... Uh, introduce yourself, give us a little background, uh, who you are, where you come from, and, and what got you to this point today in a, in a pandemic where you've, where you've had to pivot, many people have had to pivot. What has gotten you to this place where you're now discussing uh, um, these conversations such as you know relationships as well as money? Give you the floor. Hey, absolutely. Thanks so much, Denzel. You are the man with the plan, uh, the man 100 grand for sure. And so uh, it's great to be able to come on your platform and share with you and your audience. You have uh, just a wealth of wisdom and, and information and knowledge, especially in just the practicality, the spirituality of, of uh, doing business in the kingdom, being a kingdom citizen, recognizing your value and your worth and, and really the investment in yourself. And so your audience is indicative of that uh, because as as you invest in them they also want to invest in themselves and that's why uh, they come to your channel so uh, i appreciate the the powerful programming that you provide and, and glad to be able to share with you you know um, 2021 for me marks uh, 21 years being cancer free i'm a, a living witness your test is a testimony your misery is ministry your mess is a message your stumbling block is a stepping stone what God will do is he'll use your setback as a setup for your greatest comeback. He'll literally use your tragedy as strategy. Uh, I reside in the city of Detroit and uh, grew up in Kingston, Jamaica. Um, do a lot of work as a um, itinerant speaker, motivational speaker, minister, also a college professor. Um, done about 15 years in the whole education game. Used to teach on the high school level as well. and. Uh, especially pre-COVID-19, traveling a whole lot. And, um, you know, I, I'm a person who, who really lives through dying places. To be diagnosed with, with cancer as a tender teenager, I was a ha ha having and experiencing chest pains, uh, not really knowing what was going on. And oftentimes, vulnerability and masculinity cannot coexist in the same space. Oftentimes, that vulnerability is seen as femininity. How do you become a man if you don't see one, much less interact with one? And my father was not in my life, especially during those tough times of me 
grappling with cancer, much less my own identity. I'm grateful for a praying mother and uh, just the will within to be able to fight and, and overcome the obstacles of what it is. And so that's that's my um, purpose. That's my testimony of being able to empower people to overcome obstacles, develop their unique pur purpose. And I, I do that in the whole aspect and panoramic, panoramic stage of relationships. Uh, just released my 12th book this year on relationship rules, how to win at love, leadership and leveraging your purpose. So uh, just a little. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you being one of the personally signed supporters. by the Dr. Eddie Connor as well. Uh, that's that's right, sir. Got the John Hancock signature right there. So uh, definitely uh, glad to be able to have these conversations. You know, I do that as well on uh, Instagram live every Wednesday and Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So uh, looking for this conversation today. Yeah, and it looks like the, the we've got some excited people in the crowd, already 19 people watching. Um, I believe this is a client of mine. Uh, the name is familiar, and I know I've, I've spoke to him in the past. I'm pretty sure he could validate that for me. But uh, shout out to uh, Joel Flores, who's in the house. Um, Ma Mari Hernandez, hello, hello. Um, MP, how you doing? Says, I love what you're doing. Uh, and then Jose Pina just uh gave a hundred dollars in the shoot in the super chat what a blessing mm. haven't even gotten into the meat and potatoes of what we're gonna discuss <laughs> at all and uh we're already off to a really good start so i just wanted to definitely acknowledge uh you all that are in the house that are rolling all in uh we've got 21 people already this number is going to keep rising we're gonna have a great conversation now you brought up um Something that definitely I feel is a, is one of the reasons why we connect is the simple fact that you you did grow up uh, without a fatherly figure, right? You're, you're without your bi biological father. And I had the same experience as well. Um, prior to being born, uh, my father was uh, taken away from me, actually uh, wrongly convicted of a crime and was sentenced to, you know, over 10 years, if I'm not mistaken, he ended up serving, I believe, 11 years on the dot or 10 to 11 years and was released because he was actually proven innocent after so many years. Right. So you can imagine from zero to, you know, 10, 11, I did not have that uh, a father figured. Now, I did uh, thank God, you know, my mom uh, was able to, you know, say, find love again. And she, uh, you know, uh, found a, a very good, loving man who is my stepdad. I actually consider him uh, to, you know, have taken that role of father, mm -hmm. you know. And it's still, it's still one of those tough things for me to even say the word father or dad or daddy. You know, when you don't get to say those words as a, as a young boy, as a young uh, man, yes, the, the, the masculinity part, you know, does get say confused and i can only imagine what that's like in today's environment you know mm. where one could make the argument that masculinity is say under attack or 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 at least being challenged in in ways that we have not seen before um traditionally speaking so i know that's one of the things that we really connected on is being able to grow up with you know single mom, single household, um, but still be able to capture the, the masculine part. And I want to ask you, what were some strategic relationships that you built in your, say, teenage years and young adult adolescent years to develop that, that manhood, that masculine strength and be able to articulate that message, that, that behavior effectively what, what were some people in your life that really caused you to you know step out of your shell yeah great question and uh that's that's one of the battles that we grapple with is uh looking for who we are in other people and uh, a lot of times it came from individuals who did not even look like me i i know for a fact um i if it was not for my homebound uh teacher's husband mr Wenham, uh who 
when I had a bald head, when I was getting chemotherapy and radiation when I was out of school my sophomore year, he stepped in to my life as a surrogate mentor, surrogate father figure, took me to my first baseball game, just his presence alone. And, and, it, and it communicated the fact as well, just because you don't look like me doesn't mean you can't fight for me. Uh, I had another teacher, Mr. Mr. Cantor. I, I was, I'm, I'm more English than math and I was failing uh, geometry miserably. <laughs> and I put in a lot of uh, hours after um, school just to be able to do what I needed to do to, to, to pass the class, this, that, and the other. And he took an investment in me, just a, a Jewish man who didn't look like me, a Jewish man, a white man. And then also my principal, uh, Mr. Herb Ivory, uh, at the school that I was at, came up to see me at the hospital, just made an investment in me, whether it's just putting their arm over my shoulder and, and just uh, telling me some encouraging words. And uh, then as well, my grandfather, if it wasn't for him and God rest his soul, uh, taught me how to tie a tie. And uh, I developed a mentorship program for young brothers called Boys to Books. Uh, through literacy, leadership, life skills, enrichment. And he told me, he said, you know what, Eddie, you don't have to tell anybody how good you are. If you're good at what you do, they'll tell you. And so I think it's very important and imperative to have positive mentors beyond Jeezy, Weezy, Yeezy, and Jay-Z. We see it on the TV screen, beyond a, a baller, beyond a shot caller, beyond uh, somebody who's uh, who's doing something bad in the community. We can use those examples of those maybe who came from the hood or are now doing something good. Those who went through a place of struggle and transformed that into strength. Are they not heroes? Are they not good mentors and surrogate father figures that we need? And so uh, a sincere salute, salute to them uh, because of those individuals. Uh, they made me the man I am today. And another thing I'll say this as well. A lot of times we think our mentor is all about an older man trying to teach and train a young brother. Men need mentors. You can't even spell the word mentor without men. Mm. So mentorship speaks to an ever evolving uh, cycle of life that we don't have it all figured out. A know-it-all really knows nothing at all. We've got to be quick to learn, slow to speak, and, and take the advice and, and understand that mentorship teaches us in two ways. Life teaches us in two ways, mistakes and mentors. I'd rather learn from the mistakes of a mentor than to bump my own head. I'd rather go off the trail that's already been blazed than to try to chart my own and learn from people's missteps and mistakes and really uh, chart a path towards success. Mm. That's, that's, that's a big takeaway from me is that from the beginning of your uh, response, you had mentioned that they may not look like you uh, yeah. in, in regards to the type of influence that we receive in the areas that we need mm -hmm. that we may not see, right? Ex for example, being uh, raised in a single uh, family, single mom household like the two of us growing up without a fatherly role, we're not exactly mm -hmm. looking you know, uh, as we're growing up. In fact, we're actually quite rebellious towards that. Um, but we don't realize how much we actually need it until someone that doesn't look like you starts really understanding you more than the person that may look like you. And that, that was big for me in my life because there were a lot of people that influenced me that didn't necessarily look like me. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's more common I would say in probably minority communities um, or, or any household that isn't financially stable or financially secure or, you know, has had many, many uh, tough circumstances. I, I would say I would be willing to bet that it's usually that case. And I know in my household, I don't think income ever breached 40, 50,000 uh, per year. So we're always mm -hmm. below the, the average income, very low uh, middle class, not poverty line, uh, but in some, some cases we were running on, on, on fumes, right? <laughs> running on, on low mm -hmm. many different times. And 
I would say one of the very first um, um, big influences in my life was a um, an Italian restaurant owner, uh, mm. white guy, you know, but uh, you know, yeah. Italian Italian guy with a uh, mix of other some other things, and you know, he, he taught me a pretty good work ethic. And prior to that, my my stepdad, I have to give him a lot of credit, just being there, a man. Mm. You know, in in the presence from early age six seven is when my mom uh, really you know connected with him, and my mom's been with him still to this day and still lives in, you know we still live under one household, so having that was was good. But he don't look like me, and then the Italian owner don't look like me. And then when I got into sales and, and marketing, I had a, a guy from Hawaii. He don't look like me either, and it was. Yeah these male figures that are pouring into us and just i would say what what are some strategic ways behaviors that a young uh man or woman can say be a little more open to receiving that um especially when we've dealt with traumas you know certain tragedies certain challenges and obstacles to kind of ride this conversation a little bit longer what are the specific uh, uh, behaviors or attitudes that if you had to go back in time where you were like mm -hmm. either lost or rebellious, you know, you didn't want to listen to anybody because uh, I've, I've, we all go through that phase. What were, you know, an attitude or behavior you have today that you would want to, you know, feed into the next generation? Yeah, that's, that's good. That's a good uh, question. Um, I think one of the uh, key aspects and, and, and avenues is that uh, oftentimes the more exposure that we have to information, the more we think we know beyond our predecessors, those who have come before us. And so, um, you know, the, the world is a an ocean of knowledge, but a lot of people are still drowning in ignorance. And I think there's a, a fine line between information and revelation. Um, information, yes, it can change situations. However, revelation gives you a whole aspect of how to approach that to not find yourself back in where you should never be at again. Um, and I think it, it begins with having more of a receptive ear to hear, having a receptive ear to listen, having a receptive ear and a keen eye to understand that um, just because somebody may have dropped you does not mean that the next person is going to hurt you. I know for me, uh, and I saw a lot of ambivalence and even pushback from a lot of the young brothers I had mentored through the years initially. Um, the anger, the animosity, the uh, suspicion of, are you going to leave? Are you going to abandon me? Why? Because now I'm standing in proxy for an absentee father. I'm standing in proxy for somebody who extended their hand to what they thought would heal and help them, but they wind up hurting and harming them. And so beyond rhetoric, I had to build relationship first. And uh, taking an, an investment, taking an interest in the other individual and actually being able to hear them out, actually being able just to give people an opportunity and a chance uh, to invest something in you that uh, you may not have had. You know, uh, I think mentors make deposits and, we, you know, you, you're the financial guru on this. I think you might agree with me on this. Mentors individuals of keen insight and wisdom make deposits so that you can make withdrawals for the rest of your life and i think that's what it's really about yeah yeah i absolutely agree with that right there that's one of the th uh, prime example um i have a a mentor uh his name's steve parisi a lot of my followers already know who that is he's a multiple uh seven figure uh, uh earner business owner entrepreneur runs an insurance agency and you know he's got a he's, uh, I think he's 31 32 so he's got a few years on me we're not too far apart 
um, in age, but man, wealth of, of wisdom and knowledge that he's been on his end, he's been depositing, like you said, into my life. And I'm not even realizing all the withdrawals until I actually asked for mentorship. And it was interesting mm. that, you know, he, he, I've always considered him to be a mentor, but it wasn't until I started asking for mentorship and support that I was able to actually uh, reflect and say, oh, wow, you know, this guy just helped me generate multiple six figures in the last two years. And, mm. um, you know, the sales experience, the marketing experience, you know, building a YouTube channel literally following these these steps that um, he's implementing and he's just feeding it right back to me and you know there's certain people in life that you definitely have to pay right for their time and and that should never be ignored uh, for those that are listening you, you're gonna want to pay people for their time but then you're gonna come across mentors uh, uh, certain individuals that literally their purpose is to sow seed and they're not necessarily mm -hmm. looking for a monetary um re response or or relationship it's it's the results that you perform based off the information the revelation rather that they've given mm -hmm. to you right and so i know that's 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 really powerful so what i'd like to do now is kind of just little I have a little interesting conversation here on, you know, it's important to build, obviously, successful relationships, right? But oftentimes, we try to build relationships, we come in with good intentions, and they don't work out. So could you think back to a time where you were building a relationship, whether it was a friend or a friend that was in the friend zone then became dating or or vice versa um, or a business that you genuinely thought this was the person that was supposed to be um you know in your life maybe um and it just went south and can you think back to um areas according to i want to say this is the template correct for <laughs> it is, sure okay. is. so if this is the template of relationship rules in the 21st century in regards to love, leadership, and leveraging your purpose. This is the template you've built for yourself. Based on these rules, um, if you were to look back at a relationship that was unsuccessful, like you genuinely were building it, I know this happens to a lot of people, but it doesn't get discussed. We always talk about the successful relationship. I wanna, I wanna know about the, the failure one, the, and, and what did you learn from that, right? So I want you to, I'm going to ask this question real more tightly. What was an unsuccessful relationship that you went through? And what were some takeaways? What did you learn that actually helped you develop better relationships today now based off the, the template that you're using? Yeah, I, I think one of the things is that uh, we stay too long when we know that we need to move on. Um, I, I can remember a... Uh, relationship of entertaining somebody who with with toxic behavior um, because of the the lack of healing that they experienced because of the trauma that was in their life um, now in many cases because people are not healed they bleed on people who didn't even cut them uh, they're they're hemorrhaging and hurting because of the healing that they have not allowed themselves to to undertake and a lot of times people go into relationships thinking that somebody's going to complete them. Nobody's going to complete them. Only God does that. Sometimes your healing attracts people who are hurting. And rather than bringing them close, sometimes you just got to social distance and love people from a distance. Here, here it is. Sometimes we're literally trying to love, hear, hear me clearly, the hell out of people. <laughs> when, when in many cases they need to extinguish those fires and those flames on their own, uh, we, we're we're imbibing their toxicity. I remember there was a a young lady who told me one time, and and I was wondering why she would, she had pulled back, and I asked, and was kind of inquisitive. She said, uh, "I felt as if you were too good for me." Hmm. 
I said, why would you uh, feel that? She said, I just didn't feel as if I was uh, a person who was good enough to be in your space. Um, and in many cases, me being, you know, non-judgmental, wanted to to really just kind of investigate a little bit further and delve into it and, and find out that she had some some issues in the past that she needed to really remediate. And uh, I realized this, whoever you intimidate is who you will eliminate. It, it really is a, a place of uh, somebody who does not see themselves with a, a level of self-esteem, a level of a self-concept, knowing who they are. Now any and everything takes them off the tra trajectory. So many times we're trying to follow our heart, staying where we don't belong. Sometimes you're the right, sometimes you're the right uh uh, gift at the wrong address. Mm. And based upon that, <laughs> based upon being the right gift at the wrong address, sometimes we're, we're trying to follow our heart when the Bible says the heart is desperately wicked and above and deceitful above all who can know it. You don't need to follow your heart because sometimes your heart will take you where your mind can't keep you. You got to follow the spirit of God. You got to follow the purpose that he has given you. And based upon that, you got to move into destiny rather than being detoured uh, by, by avenues that lead to destruction. Uh oh, you're getting a little deep there, which reminds me on the, hmm. on the in the in the business realm in the money space. There's this oh. big, uh, um, say, advice that guys like myself. I'll, I'll put myself out there. I know I've said it before, and I've had to kind of eliminate that messaging which is this follow your passion i feel like mm. follow your passion kind of aligns with what is your heart telling you um but let's let's unpack this a little bit because this could be a little um i would say discouraging to some people when we hear a verse like that that says you know yeah who who is to know the heart of man right other than the creator and the creator is saying that the heart is wicked at levels that we don't even believe that we could get to that mm. level, but it would have to take a certain circumstance for you to get to that level. Like if you're put in a, in, in a life or death situation, you know, if you're put in a situation, you got to say something that you don't want to say and, and it can come off really, really bad, you know, or even in on on camera you know people losing yeah. their their sense of thought right on on camera and really influencing a lot of people to do ill in the world so wh where is the balance between understanding that oh okay the the heart at its core is wicked but yet at the same time the heart does produce some good quality things correct right right, right. Uh, so how and as it pertains to building relationships, growing money relationships, how do we, um, from a kingdom perspective, really, and then we'll go logical with it, because I know I have viewers that are not believers, so I want to make sure we provide some kind of template for them to, you know, implement, practically speaking, and then slowly but surely, you know, open the idea of this, this kingdom model that we can use in the 21st century to, you know, achieve the desires that, that we want. And also, you know, the desire, the desires that God has for our lives. So mm. what are some strategic, uh, either, either red flags, certain red flags or behaviors when we are listening to whether it's the heart, the gut feeling, the mind, how do we have this discernment on, on how to move forward? You know, what, what is the, is there a certain template that you follow before you engage, say, in a relationship when you're about to date someone or you're in a, going to engage in a coaching relationship or if you're going to engage in a business partnership, right? Does, mm -hmm. Is there a standard that you use? And if so, what is that? Yeah, I think the, that's a powerful question. I think one of the things is 
uh, looking at it from a place, is it realistic or is it opportunistic? Is it a good idea or is it a God idea? And I think a lot of times we have to bring our emotions in check because a lot of times our emotions can wreck our life. We've got to be able to take the temperature and, and know the barometer of where our emotions lie uh, because um, just because it, it's a good feeling to you doesn't mean it's advantageous for you. Um, one, one of those things especially is looking to see does someone's works match their words? When you're talking about relationships at all, especially relationships of any kind, I think one of the things to do is you have to go through the seasons with people. Um, you know, sometimes people, uh, they're, they're jubilant in spring. They're just, they're, their personality just springing up. Uh, summer, they want to be a hot boy. Summer, they want to be a, uh, want to have a hot girl summer. Um, in the fall, they, they just fall back. In the winter, they feel like a loser and they don't feel like a winner. You're seeing sometimes the ebbs and flows, the ups and downs. And a lot of times it lets you know, are these red flags, are, things, are these things that I'm ignoring? Are these things that I need to unpack and that I need to deal with? Uh, then also, what is the, where's the seat of your emotions? Because the heart in the Greek is called the leb. It is really the soul. It is the, really the seat of our emotions. And even when you're talking about spiritually, your heart has to not just be in your hands. Your heart has to be in God's hands uh, to where he now gives you a download of discernment uh, to say right, right idea, but wrong timing. So that you're not out of step to where you're not ahead to where you're not behind, but you're right on time with the trajectory of keeping your purpose in mind. I, I think uh, us being able to write down our goal, but also have action steps behind it. And then say, all right, this is this is what I would like. But is this God's will for my life? You know, we, we even biblically, you know, uh, scripture said God will give you the desires of your heart. And we have made that so transactional, but not accountable to where we think the Bible is just a, uh, a genie. You rub it three times and you get all the wishes that you desire. When in many cases, him giving you the desires of your heart is really his desires now become yours to where God doesn't give you what you want. But hear me, he gives you what to want. Because you're submitted and based upon that level of submission, moves you into a place of discipline, moves you in a place of discernment, moves you in a place of direction uh, to where you can even say, yes, they're fine. But discernment tells me they're not mine. Mm. OK. So you just gave it from the kingdom biblical perspective. Now, for those that are, say, not in the kingdom, um, for those that are on the fence, um, they still need to learn more, study more, read more. Um, they haven't fully submitted uh, to the presence of an almighty, all-knowing, all-powerful being. And what would be some practical moves that they could implement, right? Because I want to be transparent here, that they could implement that gets them one step closer to really understanding more of themselves rather than the people they're trying to bring into their world to fulfill their objectives, their motives, their desires. Because I know for one that Prior to me becoming a kingdom citizen, prior to me submitting to Jesus Christ and accepting him as my Lord and Savior and proclaiming that to all to know, um, I found it very difficult to sustain um, relationships with a woman, relationships in the business world um, to retain a client. Uh, to, mm -hmm. to to gain more referrals, you know, it, and I noticed, and this is a big um, part of my redemption. And I've I've done a video on this where I talked about me being a thief and not realizing that I was committing committing theft. Just because we don't get caught doesn't make it right. 
And just because we see others do it doesn't justify the move. And just because nobody's getting hurt, so to speak, doesn't also make it, you know, the, the proper path to go. So I know for me, way back when I was working in the food and beverage industry, you know, I would I would work these these tills, these registers, these machines, right? And I would manage that to make sure the money is tight every night. Hmm. I, I, but prior to me receiving that role, I would watch a higher authority do it, such as a manager. Pretty simple strategy right here. And I would see them, I'd witness them take a dollar, take two dollars, take a quarter, take 50 cents, take five bucks. Whenever the register was over, that means mm. that that means that uh, the person that's working that register didn't give the correct change, right? And then when the register is under, that means they gave too much money back to the customer instead of the exact change, you know. Uh, and then when it's over, that means that the customer gave us too much money and we didn't give them back the proper change. So it's always, you know, a math issue there. Mm -hmm. But what what happens often is. We at the at the say the the grunt level, the the just you know working the nine to five, we look at the higher authorities and we say, okay, these guys got money, plenty of money, right? Yeah, right. What's right. a what's a dollar to an eight figure, ten figure organization? What's ten dollars to a seven mm. figure organization? What's a hundred dollars to you know a nine figure organization? And we don't realize that that's creating this this negative seed uh, in us and and. This again, this is prior to me becoming a kingdom citizen. My strategy, you know, I, I'm a good person. That's my strategy. I'm coming from a good place. I'm doing this because I'm low income. I'm doing this because my mom needs help. Uh, we need extra money. And not realizing the potential to just tap into my spiritual gifts to access more money than I could ever need. Right. And so mm. we, don't, we don't see that at first. So. Um, talk to that young kid and others in the room here for the 33, 36 people watching and those that'll catch the replay. How is it or how can a non-kingdom citizen, a person that isn't fully submissive to a, a, a higher power, how do you get them to see the very flaws that they're operating in when they're building relationships? Because when I was stealing, I was considered a very good employee in the company. I made sure the registers mm -hmm. were, were solid. And whenever the registers were under, I'd pull that money that I took and put it back. Rather than reporting the money, I, I held on to it so that every night my staff was good. My, my paycheck was good. You know, and I didn't realize because that then led to me not giving my all when it came to uh, sales conversations, business conversations, uh, building relation, authentic relationships at networking event, at business conferences, and even dating, not not yeah. really showing these these you know your true colors, right? So speak to that a little bit. What what do you, what were some yeah. the what can you say to someone that's not really in the kingdom, you know, not really submissive. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think there's a fine line between uh, personal bankruptcy and, and being benevolent and also being selfish versus selfless. Zig Ziglar, a uh, incredible salesman and author, said, if you help people get what they want, you'll get what you want. And oftentimes we have too much of a handout to take versus a handout to give. And, and it comes from that level of narcissism. It comes from that level of uh, a skewed self-concept. It uh, comes from that level of uh, um, the greed that we have internally. And, and some of those, uh, if you want to categorize it, seven deadly sins uh, that really lead us on a, a negative trajectory rather than a path of personal prosperity. And I think one thing that we have to do is that we've got to take personal inventory of our lives. And despite anybody's background, belief system, whatever the case may be, we've got to take personal inventory of our lives because if anything, so many times we were living on autopilot and, and COVID-19 slowed it down to where here it is. 
you have to literally get your house in order. Not just the roof that's over your head. It's the heart, the soul, the spirit that's within you. Are you doing a check within internally? Are you, are you taking time for, for relaxation and rest and personal gratitude to be able to look at what are the flaws that I have? What are the bad habits that need to be uh, dealt with? What are the things that I have acquiesced to that I need to be strong for? Uh, who's, uh, are you taking the time for counseling, for therapy, for uh, dealing with the level of transparency and authenticity? All of that gets you into a self-check mode. Back in the day, they used to say, if you, check, if you don't check yourself, you're going to wreck yourself. And here it is. It doesn't happen momentarily. It doesn't happen episodically. It happens years down the line. Um, you started off taking a little bit of money here. You started off lying and stealing and cheating and this, that, and the other. You started off uh, trying to uh, dupe other people. And then now all of that catches up to you. Uh, the, the law of reciprocity sowing and reaping uh, the, the law of whatever it is uh, you have to in many cases abide by that because if not life is just going to catch up with you and it's not going to be in the place where you wanted it to be so I think we got to we got to do that self-check we got to do that inventory we've got to uh, take the temperature of our own life our own mind and our relationships because who we are internally is going to affect people collectively I like I like how you you know you just kind of stripped out you know the whole biblical view and kingdom just made it very practical and logical where really anyone listening to this can say you know what yeah um, if if I stole a nickel it's only a matter of time before I steal five hundred dollars five thousand dollars five hundred thousand five million it's only a matter of time if if I don't confess to the nickel. You know, and oftentimes that's what I, that was the mindset I was in. I was like, it's only a nickel. It's only $5. Mm. It's only $10. It's only, it's only, it's only, but you don't realize that a penny doubled over 30 days is over a million dollars. So imagine wow. stealing $5 a week for the next 52 weeks, for the next three, four, five years in the company you work for. And then like that pandemic strikes and then the company has to go through what's called a crisis which my definition means an opportunity to shake out the excess and keep what is good uh-oh mm -hmm. could it be you in this pandemic that occurred that you were removed from the company not because of this company having lack of funds not because the company uh, had to consolidate. Absolutely not. They got rid of the excess. They realized there's a there's a there's a hole in our system. We got a thief. We got a thief, and we don't. And and you may not even get fired for that, right? It might be right. something else that you didn't do, but because you did all these other things, you start to reflect. And I can personally attest to this that you know, working at that food and beverage company for two and a half years, I got fired blindsided. Mm. Or someone else stealing in the company. I got blamed for it because as a manager, you're responsible for your tills, right? And yeah. I was accused of stealing a key, a key that opens up certain um, doors in the location and I got uh, mm -hmm. accused of um, uh, stealing money that someone else did and they blame me for it. Now, I didn't steal mm -hmm. that money that they accused me for but mm -hmm. I sure did st stole some other money and, it, and, and then that led me to then breaking down and then calling uh, my girlfriend and saying what you said earlier about the the un, the relationship that you encountered where the, the female said I, I just felt like I wasn't good enough for you I was over here crying on the phone to a woman saying I'm not good enough for you you need to leave me mm -hmm. 
Wow. And so, <laughs> and, and that woman is still with me today, you know, five years later, you know, we're in a strong relationship oh, wow. because she was willing to see the, the Holy Spirit still was, was in there wanting to enter there and not even realizing mm. what could come from that. Uh, so I like that you addressed it biblically in the beginning and also practically logical in a sense where it's individual responsibility and accountability for our yeah. every action, every action, down to the last penny, right? When Absolutely. we're talking, you know, money or personal deposits that we put into people, you know, why are we doing these things that, that, that we do? So with that being said, I want to um, talk about a successful uh, relationship that you can think of that has produced a lot of fruit, both practically and then in the, in the kingdom sense, in the, in the biblical sense. Um, and where did the inspiration for relationship rules come from? Did it come from a successful relationship and you said that this is the protocol or was it a, a multitude of um, relationships? Kind of talk to me about this template, relationship rules, how to win at love, leadership, and, and leveraging your purpose. Why now, right, in, in, a, in a pandemic, in a, in a vastly divided nation uh, that we're, you know, dealing with right now with a, a lot of emotions at our absolute high, right? Why now? Where did the inspiration come from? Yeah, you know, the people factor is the main thing. When relationships really are make the world go round or bring it to a screeching halt. Uh, I mean, we can look at red states, blue states. We can look from the White House all the way down to your house and see uh, that that relationships really are the glue, uh, the, the, the gorilla glue, if you will, as, that's going to keep people together. But it, it can also be a divisive aspect that uh, disconnects. And uh, I think, as you saw in, the, in this pandemic, oftentimes uh, COVID-19 revealed something to us that was very, very interesting. And I think it begged the question of, can you touch somebody without touching somebody? Uh, can you be there without being there? Can you literally touch somebody's heart without using your hands? Uh, I, I developed a relationship academy focused on those three areas, love, leadership, leveraging your purpose, helping people make the, the, the trajectory turn, helping people make uh, move into a place of transformation and identity and finding the, their particular niche. What is their purpose? Who are they at the end of the day? Uh, indiscriminate of anybody else. Finding completion in themselves, but also in their relationship with God before they seek a relationship with somebody else. And I think uh, the pandemic uh, really shook a lot of things up because, uh, as I said before, a lot of it was transactional. Can you take me to Dubai? Can you buy me a bag and some shoes and some heels? Um, can you do all these things for me? But but none of that really exposes the gift of really who that other individual is. Can relationships be accountable? And so I really uh, began to look at the whole aspect of what it takes to build healthy relationships, but also purposeful partnerships. Uh, I, I have um, a friend of mine, a couple who's been married about 40 years. They're actually celebrating a uh, their 40th anniversary uh, in a couple of weeks and got an invitation to them. Um, and they, I, I asked them a question, I said, how, how have you been able to, su to sustain 40 years of marriage? Hmm. Um, and they said to me, it's, it's difficult. It had some ups and downs. However, it was always easier for me to forgive my friend because they built a relationship that first commenced with a friendship. And so many times we want to jump the broom very quickly. We want to, you know, move to dating and courting, but not in a place of a friendship. Uh, they said for me to keep the, the marriage together, it was going to take a lot of forgiveness. And uh, I, I think looking at all of those aspects, uh, the, the good, the bad, the ugly, whoever you are in your singleness is going to lead to either a marital blessing or a marital mess. Marriage is a ministry. Marriage is a merger. Marriage is a marathon, but marriage is also a mirror. It'll reveal the beauty, 
but it also exposed the ugly. Uh, a friend of mine was was making a joke the other day. He said, you know, uh, there's three rings. You you got the engagement ring. Uh, you got the the um, the marriage ring. But then you also got suffering. <laughs> and a lot of times we think relationships and marriage is all about dancing through daisies and uh, just giving roses to each other. But oftentimes those roses have thorns attached to them. Do you have somebody who literally is a purpose partner who, who can understand the whole aspect of, of vows? And a lot of people taking the, the vow out of for better or for worse. We want the better. But are you able to deal with the worse of what it looks like? And so uh, in these times that it, it seems to be getting worse and worse with all these variants and, and the variegated aspects of life. Now, I think we have to look at some some real timeless truths and look at the whole aspect of how dating is is different, how uh, couples are grappling with it. It's not like my grandparents who were married for 63 years. There was no social media then. Right. Right. Could that possibly be the reason the relationships have sustained with our predecessors is because they didn't have so much exposure. Mm. You know, some of those things that we we deal with and we grapple with in, in the book, one specific aspect is that love is not enough. You know, uh, people love each other. You can still love your ex and, and love them from a distance. Right. But you need somebody to stand in purpose with. I don't even like the term fall in love. Fall sounds like a trap. I need somebody to stand in love with mm. uh, through the thick, through the thin uh, and, and recognize that our purpose pushes us and empowers us to win you know i i I love how over the last i want to say year or two years now there's so many sayings such as you know falling in love um that i I feel like our generation the millennial generation is constantly asking questions and Mm -hmm. you know i would i would argue that our a uh, uh, way of communicating our questions may not come off as very effective or, or, or don't come off as, as good as they could be. But that's just because we're all young and we're growing. We haven't experienced what a 60, 50, 40 year marriage uh, has experienced. And mm-hmm. I, I just, I, I choose to remain optimistic in the chaos because I understand that as a kingdom citizen, I have nothing to fear. So therefore, right. I I live as if I'm going to meet the Lord tonight. You know, meaning I want to die empty. I want to I want to mm. leave it all. I want to leave it all on the table, and I don't want to keep nothing in that was a spiritual gift, blessing, anointing that that needed to be executed here on earth. I don't want to run out of time because of fear and doubt uh, and, and lack of, you know, feeling like I'm lacking when in fact we have all the tools we need once we enter into kingdom citizenship. So I, you know, act like, you know, I'm, I'm going to meet the Lord tonight, but I'm going to, you know, plan for the future. I'm not going to just, you know, be reckless out here. So I just, I like how we're, I like how we're constantly challenging, like, you know, falling in love. You say, that sounds like a trap. I want to stand in love. It, it it's not. We're not downing falling in love, but we're we're just challenging. What does that actually mean when you say that? Right. And what are the results of certain traditional beliefs or new modern beliefs that could be um, contaminating? So let's let's dive a little bit deeper here on the relationship side of of dating. Because I feel like that's one of the critical components uh, in your book, especially, you know, you're saying how to win at love. Like, that's interesting when you say how to win. Uh, so it's not a matter of, um, oh, you know, you know, we'll just you, you'll just find your soulmate or um, it's more than just kind of stumbling love at first sight. This is a. It sounds like you're approaching this from a very strategic uh, point of view, and you even made the claim that love is not enough. Um, 
kind of reminds me of like saying faith without works is dead. I, I, totally I'm, right. I'm, I'm kind of correlating it to that. Like, hey, it's, mm -hmm. you know, love is great, but love alone without the works or, you know, faith alone without the works, you, you know, you ain't no. much. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, so yeah. speak to the, I, I want to dive a little further here on kind of like, you know, dating in the 21st century versus what we were told. You know, I feel like all the dating advice that I received at a young age are either outdated or ineffective or just needs to be converted to a, a social media space where now a date could be via Zoom. A date could be FaceTime while you eat dinner and they're eating dinner um, in, in, a, in a COVID environment where people interacting face to face. Some people might be in fear, some not, you know, certain states doing certain things. How, how do we uh, navigate this field? And I, you know, I, I feel like I'm blessed to be in a successful relationship now five plus years in. And I cherish that because I, uh, you know, my girlfriend and I joke around I'm like, I don't even know how I would date somebody in a pandemic. Like, <laughs> what am I going to DM her? Like, I don't even know how to DM, you know, like I know this has been around for a while and I'm 25, but a lot of my family say, you know, I'm a 40 year old stuck in a 25 year old body. All my clients, you know, a lot of my clients say the same thing. I'm way beyond my years. Um, so in this DM clubhouse, you know, environment, yeah. uh, zooming work from home, how does, how does a single person, uh, navigate these fields? of dating, relationship, and then just the overall rise of, um, I would say, you know, women really being empowered and growing uh, and succeeding at high levels of which we've never seen, you know, like as a, let's, you know, let's approach it from the man side and then maybe a little bit of insight as well uh, from the women's perspective as well, just so that we have a transparent discussion in that right i know we're two men talking so let's definitely address mm -hmm. the men that are here both the fathers the single men the young men like myself and everyone in between but then let's also address the 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 women's perspective as well if you can uh because i do have quite a bit of an audience of of moms single moms divorced moms widowed moms that are also wrestling with dating um, finding, you know, a good man to be uh, a good provider and supporter, especially when I'm talking to them about money, you know, helping them get out of debt and mm -hmm. helping them get their finances in order and them having to take on new roles that were not required, you know, at one point and then right. became necessity. Uh, so can you speak to mm -hmm. that a little bit? Yeah, I think maybe our relationships are getting harder because they're starting on Tinder. <laughs> that that could possibly be uh, one of the things. You know, we're we're in a, a digital uh, world where, um, e, according to eHarmony.com, uh, seventy five percent of relationships, three out of it, three in every four relationships, begin online. I know people who have literally married overseas. Say that one more time. Uh, Say that one more time. Three out of yeah, four. three in every yeah. Today, uh, that's a, begin that's online a today. Wow. Right. And, and so a lot of times people aren't using uh, social media to network. They're using it to Netflix and chill instead of network and build. Oh. Uh, I think one of those. <laughs> I, I think one of those. Uh, <laughs> so many times people are using social media to Netflix and chill instead of network and build. That's a good. Yeah. One. Good one. Yeah. And and so I, I think we're, we're we're in a place, especially when you think about uh, black women, one in four black women are will only get married. They're talking about millennials, 25 to 30 percent of millennials feel as if marriage is of none effect. Many of them would rather cohabit or as my grandmama would call it, shacking up. Uh, they they don't see the the, the long term uh, benefit, much less asset to being married as they are swamped uh, in student loan debt. As in many cases, they are not even out earning their parents. So we, we're seeing so many different 
uh, aspects to um, what what relationships and what marriage looks like uh, in a uh, a world today, especially a uh, we can't even call it post pandemic, present pandemic world. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and in many cases, even scripture details this. Um, you, you could go to Isaiah and where it looks talks talks about there'll be seven women to every man. And, and they'll say, you know, just just spare me of my shame. Give me a, a child and your last name. I'll provide my own food. I'll provide my own clothes. You go you go to Proverbs chapter 31. And oftentimes we beat women over the head with uh, who can find a virtuous woman. Her price is far above rubies. We talk we talk ebulliently about that. Women know that scripture. Uh, back and forth, to and fro. Um, however, uh, we, as we talk about who can find a virtuous woman of price far above rubies, we don't talk about Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6, who can find a faithful man. I'm more English than math, but 20 comes before 31. Before we try to hold women to a certain standard of virtuousness, Uh-oh. we have to ask ourselves as men, are we faithful? Are we faithful in our character? Are we faithful in our commitment? Are we faithful in our calling? Are we faithful in our relationship to God? Brothers want sisters to be virtuous, but sisters want brothers to be faithful. And at the end of the day, the prefix for the whole, both verses is who can find. I think that's where we are in our generation now. Uh, who can find? He that findeth the wife findeth the good thing, obtain the favor of the Lord. He that findeth, but is also she that chooseth or she that rejecteth. And a lot of times we would rather uh, reject people who are good to us and for us because we are so addicted to being afflicted. And we don't attract what we want. Rather, we attract what we are. Until we've done the personal inventory of healing, taking the time to literally be alone. You know, there's a difference between being single and unmarried. It's a big difference. Unmarried just means, hey, you know, you don't you, you just you without a spouse, you're not necessarily moving into a place of, of healing and completeness and wholeness. But being single now means wholeness and completeness. The, the beginning of a foundation for the, the world, for the earth was not Adam and Eve. It was Adam entirely in his singleness is where God revealed how. He is supposed to live his life, purpose, place, presence, power. Mm-hmm. That proved on that level to where Adam was now uh, qualified to have a woman who's the crescendo of creation. She wasn't even Eve then. She was just the woman. And so uh, a man who is not in his place, is not in his purpose, does not have presence and power. It is good for that man to be alone. It's good for that woman to be alone because they have not mastered singleness. Singleness is completeness. Singleness is wholeness. Singleness is success. And until you move into a place of singleness mastery, walking in your purpose, uh, positioning yourself for your purpose partner, then you'll do more damage than good when you connect to somebody. Oh, we're getting deeper here now. We're getting into real potatoes <laughs> now. Because... You, you threw the alley-oop. I just had to dunk. That's, yeah. that's... So th- this is interesting because, you know, there's a there's quite a few uh, highly successful individuals that I'll, you know, listen to. And there's this there's this concept of get it all out of your system while you're young mm-hmm. so that mm-hmm. you can, you know, be ready for that good woman or good man how inefficient is that model of of getting out of your system get it out of your system now meaning whether it could be it's 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 sex drugs money um um, the the impulses the dopamine levels the the hormonal levels the testosterone levels that we uh extract out of ourselves and put it onto someone else and we don't realize that in return we're getting not only the garbage that we had but the garbage of that woman, that man, that woman, that man, it's now coming all in. And now we got all these, all these traumas. And then we're supposed to just find a good woman later, uh, a good man later and not, and not make amends uh, for all of these, these uh, iniquities um, and, and sins that we, um, 
exercise. So I'm, I'm very interested in that model because that is a model that I was taught. And, you know, and this is, you know, a, a personal healing process for me as well. You know, I, I was taught uh, once I actually reconnected with my biological father, you know, I didn't realize that I actually wasn't prepared mentally um, to have this, this father uh, who is my father come back into my life and influence me in, in, in ways that I didn't know I could be influenced. Um, and when you don't have kingdom citizenship, when you don't have discernment, when you don't have the full per body armor and protection of the Holy Spirit running through you, it's very easy uh, to be influenced in different ways. So can you, can you speak to this model that a lot of people on TikTok, Clubhouse, Instagram, DMs that are exercising this this get it out of your system now model and then trying to then find a good man later it's almost like the good man is getting the leftovers or the good mm. woman or the good woman is picking up you know this you know this 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 uh, very damaged man or damaged goods so to speak and then with the rise of, of these gurus and influencers and coaches that are promoting this, this uh, way of thinking, how effective is that really long term? Do you, do, you, do you know what I'm getting at, you know, in terms of yeah. like that, that model? And then mm -hmm. this idea that, you know, the good man comes last, the good woman comes last, she gets the leftovers, the scraps, you know, is that what's occurring or... Um, do you see that in your world at, at Relationship Academy that you're running and then the books that you're signing and you're writing and the, all the engagements that you're going through, the people that you're coaching? Is this something that you're, you're seeing more and more of that is so just uh, dangerous long term, especially for young people that really just don't yeah. need to be, you know, how do we promote singleness, like you said, uh, and wholeness and that single is success? that you can yeah. be alone but not lonely you know that you know you can practice you know purity and and that that should be popular that should be you know influenced um yeah speak to that a little bit yeah without a doubt you know it's two types of pains the the pain of discipline or the pain of consequence and, and a lot of times we don't get into the place of understanding what we did and how life went wrong because we were only operating out of consequence and would not operate in discipline too many times people are doing permanent things with temporary people and you can get yourself into something in in a few minutes or a few months that you're now trying to heal from years later because you attach to what was not permanent you attach to something that was off of an emotional wind uh, that which you thought was going to take you to another level and give you some euphoric uh, high or whatever the case may be and now you're expecting somebody else to pick up um, the the ashes so to speak of what it is that you had experienced and, and I think it it really boils down to the, a level of submission, a level of surrender of, of oneself to say this life is not necessarily just about me. Everybody who I come in contact directly, or indirectly, is going to be impacted by my actions and by my decisions. Um, what that all does is it delays your destiny. Because in a place of singleness, it should be a place to where you're building where you're progressing, uh, where you are uh, really taking your life to the next level. But the world, in many cases, they want you to be for the streets. The world wants you to do permanent things with temporary people. The world wants you to just try to, quote unquote, sow your royal wild oats or whatever the case may be, but not actually move into a place of destiny. And the longer you stay distracted, the more you become destructive. I'm going to say that twice because it's also nice. The longer you stay distracted, the more you stay destructive, but you also offset your destiny. 
right? Maybe it's the fact that the person who God has for you can't necessarily come into your life because not that you're waiting on God, but he's waiting on you. Mm. When you're saying, well, I'll, I'll get married and build a business. No, maybe God wants you to build a business now to where it's not so much of an uphill climb. You've got your finances in order. You've got your house in order. And now you're able to soar on wings as an eagle because you put in the work, because you took the time to be alone, because you allow God to speak to your spirit, because you were able to differentiate between what's a good idea and what's a God idea, because you did not waste your time of, of purity, of substantive development and growth, maturational development, and you actually invested in yourself. And so now you're able to really see a, a, a harvest of blessings that comes because you sacrificed. And oftentimes that's a word we don't want to use. Can you sacrifice, whether that's financial, whether that's physical, whether that's mental, whether that's spiritual, whether that's emotional, that's a place of discipline. And it's easy to run your life on autopilot. It's easy to go, easy to go out, be outside with it and run out in the streets and do whatever the case, whatever you want to do with whoever it is. Uh -huh. But a person who values themselves, and that's not just based upon a woman, because we always say, well, women are supposed to value themselves, know their worth, love themselves. That's also for us as men to do. And when we do that, We'll see our sisters do it even on a greater level. Mm. I'm just reflecting um, on, on everything that has been said so far for the 40, 45 plus people. I think we're up to almost 50 at one point. We've been talking for a good hour plus now, and I want to um, share with the audience. I want to know people, you know, go ahead and comment. Are you enjoying the conversation, the topics? Are you getting, you know, clarity? Uh, did you get an aha moment? If so, let us know in the comments. If you have a question that you want to ask, Mr. Connor, definitely, uh, you know, drop it in the comments. Let me know, and, and I'll start to uh, address that in the second half of our, of our session, which is I want to open it up to a little Q&A here uh, with the audience. But I also want to provide... Uh, actionable steps in this conversation that we've been having with you, uh, Dr. Eddie, which is we've been talking a little on the money, more so on the relationships from a kingdom perspective, but we also kept it very transparent, giving people logical, practical, you know, moves that they can implement. You, you dropped a lot of dimes, you know, Netflix and chill versus network and build. Instead of falling mm. in love, how do we stand in love? You know, you talked about information. We're in an information overload uh, period right now. We're in the information age. So you were saying information versus revelation. And then you also mentioned, you know, is it a good idea or is it a God idea? And how do we differentiate? And also when it comes to um, mentorships and influence that oftentimes they may not look like you. I attended a conference with, um, it was uh, hosted by Pastor T.D. Jakes, and he had a gentleman by the name of uh, uh, Byron Allen. Are you familiar with him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. he Detroiter. Made a, yeah, he made a bold mm -hmm. statement for his community. And he was, you know, quote unquote, he was saying, you have to look outside your Negro community. That was quote unquote his mm -hmm. words. And, and that struck a chord in me too, because I said, shoot, I got to look outside my my Puerto Rican tribe and my, you know, my Colombian, uh, you know, family and my Puerto Rican side. Like sometimes we got to go outside the culture to establish a kingdom culture, which then influences your culture that you grew up in, which then advances and perpetuates the culture to become more unified uh and inclusive in that sense so pretty mm -hmm. uh, so many interesting things and then you were saying about you know uh when you intimidate you eliminate right so with all of these gems uh, i i i want to ask like do you have like a just a book of sayings that you've <laughs> that you got that we could you know access or more so speaking along the lines of the people that are watching now live and on the replay they're like all right this is the guy I need to uh, lock arms with um, 
tell us a little bit more about the Relationship Academy. I feel like this is a place, this is my uh, uh, interpretation uh, experience, this is a place to put it all together, to have a template, to have a template and to, you know, step by step work on certain areas that you want to, you know, improve in. And it's a great place to have dialogue. So can you explain a little more on the Relationship Academy? What is it? How does it work? You know, uh, um, pricing, uh, what you got going on? Is this like your main uh, focus? Because I know you do a lot of things. I just want to know in the audience, your main focus right now is it Relationship Academy and, you know, uh, just elaborate more on that. Yeah, you know, I think uh, COVID taught us anything. It's not about being on a stage. It's about building your own stage. And um, uh, I was doing a lot of running, a lot of flying, a lot of traveling uh, pre-COVID-19 here, there, everywhere. But it all slowed it down. And, and you know, rather than panic, you have to pivot. Uh, we're not going back to normal. Normal's not behind us. Normal is ahead of us. And so I think being able to be creative in a crisis, tap into your ingenuity, uh, strategy and intentionality is, is, is the, uh, the spice of life for this season. Uh, so I built, a, built an academy uh, focused on love leadership, leveraging your purpose, really helping people to build the relationship internally first before they seek it externally. What are your, your gifts? What are your talents? What is your purpose? What were you created to do? Not who were you, not necessarily who were you created to be with. That can all come as a result of you doing the work internally first. Um, based upon that, we, we have individuals who are married. We have those who are single who are in our academy. People who actually want transparency. And, and the fact of the matter is, I, I decided to build a community. The academy is more than just, just an academy where you enroll. It's a community. The community has become a family where people can network, where people can build together, where people can support one another. I think more than ever before, people need a support system. And research even indicates those who are part of community communities and those communities are purpose driven. They will see growth and development in their own personal lives as well as their relationships. Um, so the, the academy, I mean, I've got 15 plus years of, of instruction, of teaching. I've taught from classrooms to conferences. I've done the singles. I've done the marriage seminars. I've spoken to Bishop T.D. Jakes. I've done the Steve Harvey TV shows. I've, I've done all of these, uh, aspects and these things. I've built the books and birthed the books and written the books and published, published the books, this, this, that, and the other 12 times over. And, uh, I decided to take everything that I have condensed. I've taught all over the all over the length, breadth, and width of America, as well as internationally. I synthesized it and began to just provide instruction. Uh, even tomorrow night, we're, we're wrapping up part two of the gift of singleness. Seven particular aspects of what singleness is like. Uh, in in the in the academy, is not that we're pedestalizing women. We're not punishing men. We're just finding a way to meet in the middle. What are the needs of a kingdom woman? What are the needs of a kingdom man? We did a session on how to speak Manglish, how to open up a man's mind and his mouth. It, it, it's psychological, it's transformational, it's transparent, it's authentic, authentic, it's spiritual, but it's also practical. And every single time that we meet, you're leaving with strategies that you can employ into your life and see greater growth. So I encourage you, those who are watching right now, I know there's at least a minimum of 10 of you who could be a um, uh, who could apply for this academy? Who, matter of fact, just just go ahead and register right now, DrEddieAcademy.com. Go there, register now. You can be a part of our session even tomorrow. It's nothing but love. Uh, it's nothing but camaraderie in our community. Uh, the academy is where the love resides, <laughs> without a doubt. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And I I dropped the link in the chat so you guys can check that out. I had it running on the screen as well, Dr. Ed, DrEddieAcademy.com. Um, I'm in it in myself. I've been a part of really in the beginning and yes. I've, I've been more, uh, I, I have not had the, the time to really engage like I should um, in the recent months, but in the beginning I, I did manage to engage a few times and also attend some of your um, Instagram lives as well, which have been awesome. 
what I'd like. Yeah, to not just a member, but an investor. I appreciate you, brother, for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And what I what I'd like to do is bless my kingdom citizens, my loyal subscribers that are here today. Um, where is a, a good resource, uh, a good place for people to reach out to you if they have any any questions? Would that be in the DMs or would that be a, a particular email that um, I could uh, you know type in the chat? Because what I'd like yeah. to do is bless five people that have been engaged. You've been watching. You got to take action. I want to bless five people uh, with the book Relationships Rules, Relationship Rules, How to Win at Love, Leadership, and Leveraging Your Purpose. And then um, one person, maybe we could do some kind of raffle or you could you know, do a raffle or just kind of pick a name out of the hat um, for people that email you today and today only or, or say during this session. Let's keep it even more focused on the people that showed up that have, that have stayed with us all the way through 39, 40 plus people that take action now, um, I would like to give them uh, uh, 90 days access to the Relationship Academy. I know it takes roughly 90 days to instill a habit. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why I always like to bless people in 90 day increments. So I, I'd like to do that. One person, bless them with uh, Relationship Academy. And for those that are watching, this is something that you want. I want you to want it, not just because it's free, you know, because free in many cases yeah. often gets misused, mismanaged, thrown up on the shelf. You never touch it. So uh, I want to reach out to someone that actually wants to improve their money and relationships in the realm of the the main areas I, i've taken a bunch of notes here today really the main areas that i'm working on as it pertains to money and relationships in the kingdom is really faith and family i really have that at the yeah. top then it's friends it's business and then a partner that would become a spouse you know long term that's that's the end game is is spouse and what happens is this position then you become at the top and then you instill relationships with friends, relationships with business. You, you're creating a kingdom culture that can perpetuate the system. And then the business feeds into having the resources to have friendly relationships with then friends, then feed into the family that you build because you're going to need a godfather and a godmother. You're going to need a confidant. You're going to need trusted friends. You're going to need neighbors uh, to help raise your children. Um, and so it creates this cycle. This is kind of like what I kind of drew for myself as we were having this discussion. And here are all the biggest takeaways that I had. So for those that have been taking notes, here are my notes. And then here is where Dr. Eddie spends uh, quite a bit of his time. I've seen him go roughly two hours plus on an Instagram <laughs> live. And, you know, I've seen... 20, 30, 40 people just very engaged for those two hours plus where he goes live on Instagram and then the Relationship Academy, if I'm not mistaken, that's a, a, a monthly thing or, or a, a bi-weekly, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, um, yeah, Relationship Academy every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. So Wednesday is at my Super Bowl. I'm from 7 p.m. to to uh, 9 p.m. And then 9 p.m. I'm right on Insta Instagram live right after that. So Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so just wanted to share that with you guys and um for those that take action now so first five people how do we get access to you um what, what would be the most effective uh, yeah. way for you would that be email or, or dm on instagram yeah the revolution not only be televised it'll be digitized make sure that you connect with me facebook twitter instagram primarily instagram send me a dm at eddie connor jr please put some respect on my name e-d-d-i-e-c-o-n-n-o-r JR and um, uh, our classes are every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then awesome. we go to Instagram, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, yeah. Awesome. So for those that are watching right now that want to take action, whether it's you want to be blessed with uh, Dr. Eddie's book, that's going to be on my my tab. I want to bless the first five people that uh, uh, reach out to 
Dr. Eddie via, let's let's make it specific, via Instagram DM. Instagram, right, yep. yes. Find him on Instagram. You send him a DM. You say, I was- And you got to follow. You got to follow. And say, <laughs> yep, so let's, 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 let's do this right. So you have to follow Dr. Eddie. That's first step. Then you're going to DM. Send him a DM and put this in the DM. Hey, I attended Money and Relationships in the Kingdom with- the finance geek or with Denzel, uh, I'd like to be blessed uh, with the book or put in the in the in the raffle to get the uh, 90 day access to the academy. Okay, 90 day access. That's gonna also be on my tab. That's gonna be one lucky person that is gonna be uh, blessed with that. And for those that have the money, you have the resources. You know, let's let's allow someone that actually needs it. Uh, to be blessed with that. You know, that's how I always like to operate. I like to bless people that need. They need this. They're ready and able. Yeah. They just lack resources. And when you're in a position where you have an abundance of resources, especially at my age, with the amount that God has blessed me with, I'm always looking to work with those people that are either just starting out or they got the right, they got the right mindset. They just lack the resources and they just need time like anybody else. I mean, it took me six plus years to get where I'm at. Nobody knows that. Everybody thinks that, you know, my channel grew overnight. No, it was actually four or five years of preparation. Although I started early, you know, I started when I was 18, 19, but still nonetheless, five, six years uh, to see what you see here today. To be able to get a person like Dr. Eddie Connor on my channel live, dedicating one plus two hours with me uh, and pouring into my life. And I mean, this guy is that said he spoke with TD Jakes. I've only seen him uh, on his, on on live. I've never been in his presence before. Steve Harvey. There's so many things I still don't know that Dr. Eddie Hakaner has done. Yet I had this man in my office. We recorded uh, yeah. a, a, a powerful conversation, and I'm just like, wow. I'm 25. Like this is so cool. I got this guy. I, I I'm gonna learn so much over the next two decades, three decades, four decades, you know, God willing. So I don't think people realize just who you are just yet because we haven't done enough collaboration, um, which we'll hopefully continue to do more, God willing. But um, that's oh, the absolutely. process. That's the process. You got to follow Dr. Eddie Connor on Instagram. You got to send him a DM. Either first five people or however you want to do it, you just – Pick a name out of hat. First five people, you send me the invoice for that, and then ninety day ask it, ninety day access to one person to get access to the relationship academy to start restoring, or re you know reestablishing or establishing good, healthy, righteous relationships in the kingdom that produce the resources, aka the money uh, that we need to execute uh, God's will here <laughs> Show on me earth. The money. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, 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 it goes up in the DM. S send that over to uh, Instagram and, and we are going to definitely uh, follow up with you for sure. All right. All right. So what I'm going to do now. If you if you don't have Instagram, y'all got to open up an account. That's it. Yeah. No excuse. Sleep at Y'all sleep at the wheel. Oh, yeah. You know, I, 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 I try to encourage a lot. Most of my clients are over the age of 45 to 55 and up. And I encourage them. I say, look, it's likely you're going to be on Earth for the next 70 years. You know, the the average lifespan is is upping in the 80s. Um, if you're Hispanic, the average lifespan is like 81. Uh, if you're, I think, uh, uh, I think between African American uh, groups um, and then Caucasian, if I'm not mistaken, are in the mid 70s. I could be wrong. I, I was looking at a study, and actually, Hispanics are actually are the one group that lives the longest out of all, uh, which is pretty interesting to, to know that. But regardless, people are generally living longer today than ever before, despite of a pandemic, right? People are generally living longer today. Advancement of, of, of technology, medicine, um, access, right, to, to food, to resources, to shelter, things like that. It's important to be relevant in society and that may be simply opening an instagram account and sharing your message opening a facebook a tiktok a, a youtube channel a facebook page a linkedin page 
uh, Pinterest, whatever it is, your message is powerful and you don't want to go to the grave with a book inside of you. Dr. Eddie, how old are you? And you're not even half, uh, in terms of the lifespan, the average lifespan, you haven't even broke half. So you're not even in half time in terms of life quarters. You're in the second half of your life, right? Pretty much. And you've got another half to go, uh, more than a half, right? Plus, yes, yes. And you've, wrote, you've written 12 books. And there's people on this earth that have been roaming for 60, 70, 80 years, never wrote a single book. Now, I'm not saying go write a book, but what I am saying is maybe a blog, maybe an article, maybe an interview, maybe a podcast, something <laughs> to, to uh, share your message. And, you know, being in community, like Dr. Eddie Connor was saying earlier, being in, in, in a community, what is it again? Increases your what? Your... Oh, it, it, yeah. Being in a thriving community, it increases your uh, longevity in regards to success in relationships, success in personal connections, all the sustainability that's necessary for uh, building healthy relationships, purposeful, purposeful partnerships. Awesome. Awesome. So we're an hour and a half in and I want to respect your time. Um, I, I, I heard the, the clock go off, so I want to make sure that we have ex an extra maybe 15, 20 minutes, or do we have to cut it? I want to be respectful. Yeah, yeah, I would say, I would say, yeah, uh, 20 minutes, uh, Got hard it. 20 minutes on that, yeah. Okay, so we'll stop at, we'll do a hard stop at 145, 150, and I'm going to look at some of the comments. I'm going to scroll back up to the top, work my way down. Um, we got uh, Eric Robertson says hi from Germany. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Start Danke Shane. I started watching you because I'm a widow, raised my four children with dad in prison prior to my husband that passed. Okay, I have done nothing but talk to all my friends about you. Oh, I think she's talking about me. Okay, okay. Uh, God bless. Thanks for being here and hanging out all this time. Uh, I did see it. Okay. Can you talk about the scarcity mindset in relationship to self, ourselves, and, and how it may lead to, to damaging behavior long term question for you yeah i think um you know the whole aspect of scarcity you know it, it comes from a place of if you feel as if you're lacking if you feel as if you know you're going to be insufficient you're going to choose out of being needy but not needed see you 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 know you're ready to date much less be in a relationship or married when it's not an when it's not a need, it's a choice. Uh, but if you're choosing out of weakness, God forbid you get into the relationship and now you get healed and you look up and say, what in the world did I just choose? I chose out of scarcity. I chose out of necessity. I chose out of lack versus me being fruitful and multiplying with what God has given me to where now I can be an asset. You, you never want to be needy. You want to be needed. And you can't be needed if you only operate from a mindset of scarcity. So it, it, it speaks to the mindset. If you're not going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, you're going to be conformed uh, to what your mind shouldn't be attached to in the first place. Mm. We got another question here by Yodita. Where's the best place to meet someone? You know, I think that's a very, <laughs> it, it sounds like a, like an, I don't want to say a dumb question. No question is dumb, but like, I would feel embarrassed to, to ask it. And so I want to honor the person for asking the question, hey man, where do I, where is the best place to meet someone? I, I you know, obviously, uh, you know, maybe I've done the club scene and I've done the parties and it, it it's here and go and we're, we're 21st century, right? Social media at yeah, all time yeah. highs. People can't put this down. Uh, where is the most effective places to meet someone, you know? And let's maybe answer it from a kingdom perspective and then maybe more logically just to be, you know, have that transparency mm -hmm. with everybody. What would you say to that? Uh, I mean, you, you would, from the kingdom aspect, you would say, you know, initially the church. But I mean, and that is good, too, because 
Um, you know, you want somebody who's spiritual. Uh, however, when you think about church population, um, primarily, especially if you're thinking um, minority demographic, 60% of those churchgoers, 60-65% of those churchgoers are women. Uh, if you want to bring it down to uh, uh, our white brothers and sisters, it's uh, still going to be outnumbered women to men in the church. Uh, you know, from a kingdom perspective, especially, and I think it can transpire over to just a realistic, practical perspective. Does who you want want you? And thinking about where would somebody who I want want me go? It's in the mundane normalcy of life. It's in you going to the mall. It's in you going to uh, the grocery store. It's it's in you um, going on the track and going for a walk. It's in you just being normal and also being your best self when you when you walk out being your best representative. You don't get a second chance to introduce yourself to somebody um, that in many cases uh, sees you for the first time. So I think uh, from that particular place, not going out, necessarily looking to be chosen, right. but just enjoying yourself and enjoying your life. Mm -hmm. And then also if, if somebody, especially for our sisters, somebody's trying to approach you, they don't want to approach you with you looking like you're going on a girl's trip all the time, you know, with you and your five sisters deep, five girlfriends deep, because he knows if I'm approaching you, I got to go through all of them first. Mm. And if they don't size me up the right way, they're going to block me from getting to you. And sometimes they're blocking me from getting to you or vice versa, because they don't want you to be with nobody because secretly they're jealous of you. Uh -oh. So can, can you actually take yourself to dinner? Can you take yourself to the coffee shop? Can you take yourself out and not feel so insecure because you're by yourself? That's what we talk about singleness versus unmarried. When you're whole and when you're complete, you don't mind running your life the way that you run your life and you don't need everybody to be crowding your space. If you don't enjoy your own company, why would somebody else want to? Absolutely. So, it, so your answer is just in the mundane and in the day-to-day in -day -day life is where you, is where you're going to meet. Life. Is where you're going to meet the one. When you're not uh, looking for it, is when you attract it. Uh, right. Got it. Got it. And and yeah. you mentioned uh, a I don't know if it was a prophecy verse, but uh, how you said there'll be seven. Uh, women to every one man. Can you uh, just bring that up again? Because I feel like it's is when you when you hear that it's like, well, it must be much harder for men. Um, from the perspective of we have so many options, and then from the perspective of a woman, it's like there's so limited options that the ones that uh, and and then of those limited say 50% are just, you know, clowns or not ready. And then you're, you're down to like 1%, you know, or 5% or 10% or whatever the, the numbers actually boil down to, to find um, that, that individual that really wants to, you know, cherish you and build um, a long-term relationship. So it's, it's not even, um, is it goes past mindset, I believe as well. Like mm -hmm. in the, in the environment that we're in today, we've had, we have this, big gap where there definitely is more women to men. And so how do we navigate that just from a mathematical perspective that, well, there's going to be some people that are going to be alone. Uh, that if we work the math out, <laughs> how do we solve? How do we uh, navigate that? Um, and, or do people give up and then they say, you know what? I'm just going to be reckless out here. Cause you know, there ain't nothing left, you know? So, the different dynamics that that occur. Could you bring up that scripture? What does it actually mean yeah. when he said that in in the Bible? And how do we navigate in the twenty first century today with that information? 
Yeah, um, it, it's a scripture from Isaiah, Isaiah chapter four and one. It said, "In that day, um, seven women will take hold of one man, and say, we 'We'll eat our own food, we'll provide our own clothes. Just let us be called by your name to take away our disgrace.'" So it's it's the whole aspect of being betrothed to a certain particular man in the marital aspect, but take away the shame of societal perceptions because uh, so many people feel as if their life has no value if they're not connected to somebody else. And we can see today, you know, we say um, there's something called the psychology of selection. When people have so many choices, they don't choose. It's, it's, it's if one of the worst painstaking things is to go to a restaurant and you got about a hundred selections and you, I mean, it's, you feel as if you're studying for a test. I, I don't even know what to choose off the menu because it's just too much food to, to choose from, it, it, you know. And so, so many times with individuals as well. And I think social media has provided that type of exposure because, you know, oftentimes we just say, well, brothers have so many choices. Sisters do, too. And generally, they're orbiters in the DMs. <laughs> we don't talk about that, though. Mm. Uh, so um, it just on the external aspect, the mathematical place, I think there has to be a, a, a place of somebody saying to themselves, yes, this is my desire. I believe God is going to grant the desire of my heart. But it also has to be a, a, a three Hebrew boys, if not. Because no, you were not born simply to be married. You're talking about a kingdom aspect. Uh -oh. You were born to fulfill the purpose of God on your life. Everything else is ancillary. Mm. Everything else is, is an asset without you being your own particular liability. So marriage is for this particular earthly journey it's not going to be in heaven but it's for this particular earthly journey and and even though the odds even though the statistics say whatever they say god still has a remnant for that particular man that particular woman based upon them walking their purpose their singleness and uh really god even granting the desire of their heart that's good i like that response and we'll yeah. do one more question we'll wrap it up uh sharon uh says how can you convince a, a teenager uh that she is not ready for a relationship with a boy uh with her friends have when her friends have boyfriends and she thinks she is not as cool as them mm, I, I think one thing is that uh you know i would tell my guys all the time I said, hey, bro, you know, as you're a teenager, focus on your books, not her looks. And you, you really need to be taking the time to develop academically, spiritually, socially, emotionally uh, versus just, you know, spending your time with just one particular individual, whether the relationship lasts or not. Build a friendship first. I think that's where the relationship would be building the friendship first in those teenage years. Um, those who are that have been the high school sweethearts, those who college sweethearts, so on and so forth, uh, weren't in place of rushing it, they were trusting it. They developed a friendship that was able to help them sustain it. So um, you can only tell somebody so much sometimes People are just going to have to learn by bumping their heads. Uh -oh. And uh, if, if they don't take the the inventory and initiative, then, you know, they, they, they look in, they live in regret and regression versus progression. Yeah. And do you think it's necessary sometimes to my, hit your head a couple of times or, or is that really uh, a message we want to be, say, preaching um, versus yeah. if it happens this is how we can remedy the situation and, and recover because some people are going to get their heart broken. Some people are going to get cheated on. 
some people are going to be in the friend zone establishing friends and then another guy's going to come in and sweep that that lady right off her feet and you're like shoot i Mm -hmm. I went the i went the friend route and i stayed that route instead of you know uh so it, it can be very alarming sometimes i guess from the male perspective of well i gotta i gotta i gotta capture I gotta hunt, capture now versus someone else with more charm, more whatever, more money, more influence is gonna come in and, and sweep this woman off her feet when I've been putting in the time and being strategic mm-hmm. and friendly and being appreciative and supportive and um, putting in all this work and then here comes this situation. So. The question is, you know, do you think it's necessary sometimes hit your head to get gain some perspective or is it a one of those gray areas? Yeah, it, it can be a gray area for a lot of different individuals. It's what you're willing to hit your head on. Oh, uh, you, <laughs> are you willing to hit your head by saying, all right, I'm, I'm going to save my money and I'm going to eat a little bit of ramen noodles. Uh, and sacrifice going out to eat and start cooking my food because I'm, you know, making I'm I'm fiscally responsible. Or uh, are you doing permanent things with temporary people? Because now that becomes even more risky, spirit, soul, and body. Uh, it, it is if you're going to fail, which way would it be? Especially as when you're talking about those younger years, which are so formative, which can be very very impressionable. Uh, saving yourself from a lot of heartache, heartache and headaches is uh, keen and necessary. So I, I think it it really boils down to even a place of maturity, development. And sometimes people are choosing individuals out of a void. Um, many times, you know, young girls, I believe she was talking about her teenage daughter. Uh, they're looking for a father figure. They're looking for a, a surrogate male role model. They, you know, and based upon that, they're choosing somebody who, in many cases, not as even developed as they are. Because oftentimes, teenage girls develop more mentally quicker than teenage boys. Mm-hmm. If she especially is, and hopefully she's dating within her, her age group, range and her age group. Right. So um, I think those are some factors that we just have to, to look at and figure out. Got it. Got it. Oh, I, this has been a, a load of information given today as well as revelation, I assume, with the people watching today. I've seen some great comments, great questions. Uh, we've given the action steps. Um, I'm, I'm going to shut the live now, uh, doing a hard stop. At a, I see one more question here. Oh, you do? You want to go ahead and uh, answer? Yeah. Peaceful mind. Uh, do you believe in the perfect mate? Um I think the perfect mate brings peace. I don't think anybody is perfect. We all have our flaws. They're not perfect, but are they worth it? And uh, the thing is, are they perfect for you? Uh, Love is not about finding a perfect person. Love is about uh, learning to love an imperfect person perfectly, according to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, that love chapter. So uh, not so much. Nobody's perfect. Are they worth it? And are they perfect for you? Mm. That's where it boils down to. Got it. Got it. Powerful. Good way to close out here. I, I like it. I, I enjoyed our time today. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I want to say thank you to the, the audience as well for tuning in. And also um, for for Jose earlier giving $100 in the, in the super chat. Uh, that was awesome. Really appreciate it. I'm actually just going to take that money and bless the, the, the five people with the books. Uh, the 90 day access uh, so that, you know, one person can be blessed. I already gave the instruction for those that are watching live. So you better take action very quickly because that will run out. And um, yeah, uh, any closing remarks, uh, anything you want to share again, uh, I can put your link up where they can see where to go. Uh, Anything you want to share, Dr. Eddie, as we close? Hey, Denzel, I really appreciate you, brother. You you really provide a, a really empowering kingdom principles and practical wisdom from A to Z and everything in between. Uh, you know, you just 
just like the other guy, Denzel. Uh, I think his last name is Washington. <laughs> you are a man on fire. Uh, you know about uh, God's glory. Uh, but every single time you go on YouTube, it's always training day. So we, we definitely appreciate you uh, just for the opportunity to be able to share your wealth of wisdom that you have. You know, uh, being able to give people's roses while they can smell them. Uh, to see how you're you're thriving in your youth and so many people are using the channel of youtube to excoriate others and to diminish and to debase you you you're using it to develop and so uh that that speaks to the ingenuity the maturity that god has placed on the inside of you and and your gift is making room for you bringing you before great men sure. and women locally and globally so thank you for the space and place to be able to share with your audience, but also how you've invested in me uh, through the years and, and, and definitely a product of your kindness and uh, your friendship. So appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Thank you again. God bless you uh, and everybody watching and catching the replay. Uh, I hope to be able to do another topic like this, maybe even more focused, centered, and, uh, you know, just see where it goes, see how many more people we can continue to serve, continue to help. God bless everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we will be talking soon. I remember you saying, hey, I know something's there, like with this policy design, as you were digging into it, really from the consumer side. I guess you could say there wasn't a big amount of creators on YouTube that were focusing on velocity banking, personal finance, things like that. It, like you said, it doesn't matter who you get the information from, as long as you get the information and you take action, <clears throat> that's all that we ask at the end of the day, so that you can build wealth for your family and your, your family's family. Hey, here's a taste. Now, if you're feeling it at all, then go take a deeper dive. Go start doing your research. Start listening and learning about this whole concept.